Hello, um, good evening. Uh, this is the January 11th meeting of the Amherst Transportation Advisory Commission. Uh, we do have a quorum of members present. I hope that some of our other members will also tune in. But we can go ahead and start the meeting. Um, we do have a statement we need to read just about having the remote meeting. And um, Kim, do you want to read that statement or I also have it? I can't, we can't hear you. Yes, okay. now you can. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, um, this meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is conducted via remote participation. Excellent. And so um, let's just go ahead. It's always helpful for Amber with the minutes um, to at least like go around the room, our virtual room, and just identify who's here. Um, so particularly for people who aren't shown on the screen. So I'll start and I'm Tracy Zafian and I'm the chair. So I'm Kim Tremblay, I'm the vice chair. Uh, Joe Fatteruso, a TAC member. Uh, Stephon Marcus Chase, Smith. TAC member. Okay. Marcus Smith, a TAC member. All right, excellent. Thank you all. Thank you all for being here. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so um, I sent around the agenda. I can pull it up again if we need to. Um, the agenda was a little bit light because this is, you know, right as the new council is getting started, but we did have some carryover items that we still wanted to discuss, uh, including just the role of TAC and tax status and the future of TAC and those types of things. Um, so the first items I had put on the agenda were just some informational updates. Um, current status items, which are just, are things that TAC is not actively involved with, but I thought that they're helpful for members to have that information. Um, so the first one I had put on the agenda was just the traffic calming near Cushman Scott in North Amherst. Um, and I can just share on my screen um, what the resolution that went to the council, just so people can just take a look at it. Okay, so um, so I hadn't been present. So what happened was TSO voted um, to uh, to ask for make the following recommendations to the town council. The town council, when they met on December eighteenth, they accepted those recommendations. Um, so here is I'm showing that the council recommended adding dynamic speed feedback signs in each direction of traffic on that section of Henry Street, having the increased traffic detail from the Amherst Police Department. And they also asked for a report back from the town manager regarding recommendations for traffic calming measures. I know that they were also looking for some additional guidance about traffic safety zones and what's required before they can be established. Um, so Guilford, I don't know if you had any updates on that at all. I know you had been looking at hiring a consultant. Mm, the consultant's on board and you actually know more information than I do. Uh, that's hard to believe, but okay. No, I haven't um, seen what you saw. So you showed. So that's, that's more uh, information there than we have. All right. Well, so that's uh, what I just pulled up here is just the TSO carryover memo that they sent to the council. Um, and I also just, um, we do have additional member present in the room. So, uh, Chris, will you just identify yourself and Amber will have you in the minutes. Hi, I'm Christine. All right, thank you. All right, um, so other carryover items from the council, I'll just pull that up again. Um, so I guess, I guess Guilford, um, just before we move on with that um, issue, with the Henry Street study, is there a time frame for when the consultant will be doing that study? Uh, I imagine it'll be done in um, two, about two months. So I know that like one of the concerns that TAC had raised and then some TSO members echoed is just to make sure that the traffic counts are done until UMass is back in session, which happens at the beginning of February. So is that the mm -hmm. current time frame for that? They'll use the current. We've done already done two rounds of traffic counts out there. Okay. I think we just use those. All right, thank you. All right, let me pull this up again. Okay, so um, this was just from the carryover memo. Let's see the other items that 
I thought would mainly be of interest to um, to TAC. So one thing that's been a carryover for a long time is um, this North Pleasant Street from Pineman to Eastman Lane. So TAC members who were here then, and I think we had most of the current members on TAC at that time, that we did go ahead and we did review the, um, the, the conditions along that section of North Pleasant Street, east um, north of Eastman. Eastman is where the roundabout is at the UMass campus going north towards the center of downtown down um, North Amherst. Um, and then it kind of got put on the back burner. Um, you know, there was, it was coming before the council in the fall when I guess there was a proposed bus stop, but that didn't move forward. Um, so I don't know, um, Guilford, do you have any updates on that at all? Um, it's on the list to go back to them, but they haven't scheduled it yet. And I did talk to the last TSO chair too about um, providing them with the information that we had collected and the feedback that we had at that time. So one of the things that happened, and this was actually before, not this past council, but the council before that, the council that was in um, in office from 2022 and 2023, is that it got, one of the things is that there were other traffic issues that that council was looking at, including um, on North Pleasant Street at Kendrick Park. And so this, particularly because there weren't funds to move this project forward, it just stayed out there. Um, so, but um, it would be great, I think. And I did talk to the last TSO chair about, you know, providing some input to them just based on the earlier site visits that we did there because tech did spend quite a lot of time. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then um, let's see, there was also- oh, Sorry, Christine has her hands up. Hand yeah, up. Chris. Hi, um, I was just curious, and this might not be the right time for it, but um, so it's possible for the town council to uh, recommend that this happen, but still there be would be no funding for it, so it wouldn't happen. Is is that what you're saying, or um, do funding steps occur concurrently with decision making? I'm I'm not quite following that piece. So I don't know, maybe Guilford can speak to that more, but I believe that the the council could recommend it, you know, pending funding. Um, but, and there have been some improvements there, like there have been the changes up at the north end, you know, with Pine Street with the sidewalks and things. So, and I know that Chris Bressa, when she's come to our meeting, she's talked about different smaller pieces of it. Um, again, like pending the funding, I think that the council could still move forward. But yeah, that's two separate items. But really, um, funding and recommending. Yeah, I mean, um, and your Guilford, do you have comments to add? Guilford, do you have? Yeah, actually, from my standpoint, once the council approves it, then we start kind of move, moving it around to try to find funding. And if it doesn't have, there's no funding laying around, then we would ask for more funding or just move it off into another year. There's a standing appropriation for sidewalks and paving every year. And something like this would just get put into that standard sidewalk appropriation. Okay, thank you. Andy, did you have anything too? Your hand is raised. Yeah, I hand was up on a slightly different element of it. Sure. Uh, um, the action to get into what um, Guilford was just pointing out, I think it'd be uh, important for this committee and the council to sort of weigh in on all roads together. It's sort of hard to say, gee, this is a priority and ought to get funding when we know that there's such a huge backlog that where does it lie in your assessment of where the greatest needs are. And uh, that's where your expertise, looking at the whole range of roads, really needs to get better, uh, a better sense of where the roles are and how to play it out. But I would hate to have the council jump and say, yeah, we like this project, 
it had been it had been interpreted to be a prioritization that has not worked through an appropriate uh, sequence. So I guess that was my comment on that. And the other thing that I was going to raise just to um, bring it out is I think that in my recollection at the TSO meeting, Guilford was that the major reason that it was coming up and getting a little bit more attention was because of the question about the location of, of the bus stop. Um, yes, I mean, the neighbors are using the bus stop as an, as a reason to stop something else that was going on, but to bring it back to the council. <clears throat> but North Pleasant Street is one of the tax the tax many years ago voted some priorities and North Pleasant Street sidewalk improvements was their number one priority. And then there's other projects that have already been vetted by the TAC as being the next priority for sidewalks or improvements. There's East Pleasant Street, which is actually going really slow. <clears throat> there's pot, pot Wine and 116, which actually has moved ahead a little bit faster than East Pleasant Street. So it's that's kind of how these have moved forward. Right. So, and I mean, the TAC has shared, so it's been a few years since we looked at that list, but the TAC has shared our list previously. I think that one of the challenges, right, is the TAC as an advisory committee, like we can tell the council that these are among our priorities. Um, and I know, it, I think it like last meeting or the meeting before that, we were also talking about um, like the South Amherst common area, which is something that TAC spent a lot of time thinking about even before I was on the committee. So that's actually been one that's been around for at least like five, six plus years, because I've now been on the committee for close to five. Um, so I think that we could do that at a future meeting. I know that Guilford too is sometimes pulled up that he has his spreadsheet of like the identified priorities and things. And we can tell the council what our priorities are, but as an advisory committee, you know, we sort of have some limit and we've also talked about whether we should be, whether we should be telling the council that, <laughs> you know, so, but in our last, um, the last memo, when we sent a memo to the council in 2022, we didn't include our own personal list, but I'd be happy to talk about. I mean, we could talk again about whether that's something we want to share because some of the projects we did identify back in 2022, including better access with Graff Park and at Pomeroy and things, those have moved forward. So that is some progress. Uh, so a couple other things that were on the carryover memo from TSO. One is the proposed streetlights policy. So TSO had reviewed this a few different times over the fall. And even, you know, going back almost a year. Um, and the last action that they took was, and the council agreed, was to direct the town manager to develop an updated streetlights policy based on the policy that was proposed by councilors uh, Devlin Gothier and Haneke. And so um, when I spoke with the town manager about that, he said it's now in DPW's hands. So, so Guilford, I don't know if you have any updates on that yet, but... No, we have to get a meeting with our um our light vendor. I haven't got that set up yet. Sure. Um, so that's something you know, as I had offered previously, that you know, given the research I did when that policy came up, I'm happy. I'm happy to you know share some of that information with you. Um, then the last carryover over item, and this is one that's been on the um agenda for a while. Was just these thing, these uh, Mass General Law, you know, Chapter 17C and 18B about um, speed control within municipalities. Uh, so one of them, you know, there is the traffic speed zone, the safety speed zones that be, can can be created, and that is something that the council has now adopted. Though, you know, they're looking at Henry Street as the first case. The other is the idea of establishing a 25 mile per hour speed limit throughout town, except for where otherwise posted. I mean, that hasn't moved forward yet. I'm not sure what a priority that will be for the next TSO, but I imagine it will come up because I think it's actually come up even, it says that it was originally referred to TSO in 2019, but I believe it had come up even like five, 10 years earlier. And Andy might know a little bit of that history having been 
on the council and the select board for all that time. But so, okay, so I'll just stop sharing those. And um, let's see. So the other thing is, so those are carryover items, the road project updates. Um, okay. So one thing um, in the town manager's report, um, and Guilford may have more additional information on this, but he had met with, um, there's a list of um, places where they're going to be doing like improved crosswalks and rectangular rapid flashing beacons near Amherst College. Let's see where, yeah, I can just hold on, pull this up. So this is all just kind of in the update part of the meeting. Um, so these are all, pro these are all signs that Amherst College has agreed to pay for. And so I'm, Guilford, I'm assuming that you had been involved, the DPW was involved in reviewing all these and making recommendations to the town manager. Is that correct? Yes. I mean, basically we're just taking the project that was approved many years ago to put the little push buttons and the flashing lights in um, and making them conform with the uniform manual of traffic control devices. So that's all it is. So all the ones that are, so are there any additional ones? So all these ones along college are where they currently have those lower, the bollards, right? At like waist yes. level height. And then there's also the ones on South Pleasant Street. Yes, they're all the, every, every place there's a crosswalk on it. South Pleasant or College, where you push the button and it flashes on the side of the road. Right. Um, that's now going to be a regular R. And R then, R. and then also these new speed back, speed feedback signs, which haven't been there previously. And they're yep, uh, they're only on one. They're only on College. Hmm. They're only on College. No, it says South Pleasant. South Pleasant. They're only South yeah, Pleasant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh. And it says one southbound and one northbound. Um, so do you know what the time frame is for those being installed? Or They're going to probably get installed sometime in February. The vendor, it's a supply issue. They haven't showed up yet. Okay. But you're not really involved. Are you involved with any of that? Or is Amherst College doing all of it? Um, Amherst College is buying it. And Amherst College and the town will work together to start okay. replacing everything. Got it. All right. Well, thank you. Um, okay, let's see other updates. I don't know, did you have any other updates for us? Um, I know that there's the Route 9, like the work on Northampton Road. It looks like that's all done now. And, and everything's all, signed. That's all done. They're closing it out. There's a couple issues, um, which I don't know how they're going to resolve, but they're not mine to resolve, so I'm happy. Um, the one thing to note is that there, we have our first left turn bike boxes in town. Um, we're trying to get something together to put on the website to talk about those, but uh -huh. you have, you have the left turn boxes now at the intersection of nine and university right. drive. Oh. Yeah. So there's a professor at UMass, um, Amherst, uh, Eleni Christoffa. She's done a lot of work on bike boxes. She's done, she's now on the second phase of a study that she's done for mass DOT, about the use of bike boxes in the state and how they can be configured better. Um, and also just how effective they are and so on. Um, I'm happy to share like her information from her study. Um, but I was also talking with her about it. And one thing we were wondering actually, I mean, it is very exciting to have them here because I don't actually believe they're even maybe almost anywhere in like Western Mass. Um, and they can really be helpful. Um, but one question we had is just like how much the bike traffic actually is on Route 9, like typically. Like it seems that, at least in the better weather, that a lot of cyclists would be taking um, the rail trail more than they'd be on 9. So. Well, the rail trail crosses there. So right. yeah, most of the traffic is people crossing um, crossing 9 not on 9. Or, but then there's now bike lanes on 9. So maybe there'll be more people and there's a bike lane well, actually a bike lane on both sides of nine so hopefully there's well, and, yeah and the rail trail isn't clear during the winter right Correct. so it is an important corridor then but just it takes a certain confidence as a bicyclist to be biking like along that corridor just given even with the separated bike lane the visually separated bike lane and so on so where is the bike lane where is the bike box 
Is They're at the intersection of um, University Drive and Route 9. I haven't seen them. So are and they coming so, down the hill? They're going up? Which which, which direction? So the, bike bo the way the bike boxes work is that um, they're at each corner of that intersection. Hmm. And the idea is you go through, like, if you need to make a left turn, you go through the intersection, and then there's a box that you wait in. Right. And yeah. then it allows you to, like, safely go left. Hmm and not have to be like in the left turn lane in the car lane basically to go left i could um, go try it out and there's out. signs you know at each one for a while the signs were up it said bike box here when there was no green marking on the pavement but yeah. now there's green marking on the pavement yeah i just so i think a, a few of the signs are like misaligned in my opinion but um but yeah cool so but they have been proven to be effective and improve safety in other areas. So it is pretty exciting to have them there. Um, and then, so Guilford, I had a question too, just about um, the four foot passing signs. So has um, Amherst has received some from the state? We have. Are there, and there are there ideas yet about where they're gonna go? They've started going up. Um, ah. They're going up mostly. I mean, the goal is to tell people entering town, this is the rule. Um, mm -hmm. and then there's a couple extras and then we're going to put those in a couple other places so they're 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 being put in are they being put in places where there aren't bike lanes yes it's good because that's where they're most needed they're they're going they're going in yeah it's basically any road that comes in the town is going to have one on it somewhere so bay road um uh. Mm -hmm. Even some of the ones you wouldn't think. We put some, there's on, one on East, East Lever Road. There's one, huh. um, I'm trying to think of the top of the head where they all are. Belchtown Road has them. Um, so anywhere where you come into town, East Hadley Road. Huh. Uh, I think West Bay Road has them. What we have left to do is West West Street and uh, South Pleasant, which we, we have a couple of extra signs and we'll probably put more on that one. Nice. In my in my opinion, we could really use one on whatever that street is that goes by the high school by the playing fields. Triangle. Is that triangle that goes like That's the... ends by Bruno's? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's triangle. Yeah. But they do have, I mean, that road at least does have sidewalks on both sides, right? No, it doesn't. Only on one. Only on one side, and they're really narrow. So, it, like biking is really dangerous on the road. I, I, I uh, even I feel dangerous, and I'm the most. Dangerous. So it has on the side across from the school. It has sidewalks up to um, cottage. Is that right? On the school side, yeah. No, it on goes the all the way, goes all the way down to Bruno's, and then down. No, but I'm saying the sidewalk though. Yeah, the sidewalk ends on the side away from the school. Is that's that's what you're saying, right? It's yes. only on the side away. From yeah, yeah. As it approaches like Lessie, like there's none, there's none at the Lessie curve and things, for example, um, which actually comes to the next item, which is safe routes to school updates. Um, so Jeremy Anderson, who was one of the Cushman Scott parents, like over in December, he reached out to some, the town counselors in North Amherst and, um, and also I believe he like emailed the town manager and the DPW, the Amherst police, just about he had interest in having um, the speed signs, the your speed is signs like put in on the approaches to the elementary schools around town mm -hmm. um, to help make people aware of how fast they're going and to make it safer in those areas. Um, so he was interested in submitting his request as a residential request for the capital improvement plan for 2025, which would start in the July 2025 year. Um, and um, I just emailed him back today. Unfortunately, I didn't get to it sooner, but just also telling him about how one of our focuses had been improving, uh, Kim, as you were just mentioning, just about the safety along Triangle Street and that neither the high school nor the middle school do have um, safe route to school signs yet or safe zone sign school zone signs yet, which would allow for there to be reduced um, speeds during school hours. So I know that came up at a previous meeting. Um, I don't know, Gil and Guilford, you had thought that 
we might look into that a little more. I was wondering if you had a chance to do that. Um, so I still see that as like one potential priority. Um, yeah, I just, agree. And particularly, I mean, one of the things with the high school students too is that the high school students do walk back and forth between the school and downtown and they do a also lot. do it at night. And um, and I found personally that even though there's now that rectangular rapid flashing beacon, I guess this wouldn't really help <laughs> um, because the school zone speed limits are only enforceable during school hours. But when I've tried to cross at Lessie, even though there's a rectangular rapid flashing beacon there, I find that traffic is not yielding to me at all, yeah, no, even when the lights are flashing. Um, so I think anything we can do to like make that corridor safer is a good idea. So. We'll see. I did reach out to um, Jeremy and we'll see if he gets back to us too. And I also don't know what the time frame is yet for the town to solicit um, resident requests for the capital improvement plan. But, um, but and then um, also Safe Reach to School, they do have a signs and lines program that can help pay for signs. But one, the grant is not until the fall. Um, and it's also a pretty small program. Um, last year, they did offer like upgraded safe routes to school, school zone signs. Um, and they gave them out to over like 125, maybe 140 communities. Amherst wasn't one of them. Um, but if they do that again, maybe that could be something that Amherst applies for. Um, okay. And then, okay, so let's move on to the stuff about TAC and relationship to TSO and the council. So I have had some conversations with the town manager about the idea of a transportation commission, which is something he brought up to the council earlier in the fall. And there was some, you know, pushback about that idea about councilors giving up some of their authority as keepers of the public way. And they also asked a number of questions, including looking for more information about where it's been implemented. Um, the town manager had provided them with the spreadsheet showing all the communities they are any any town that's a any city in Massachusetts and Amherst even though we call ourselves the town of Amherst we're technically a city any city is allowed to establish them um, and so a number have done so and they work in different ways um, so that's something that the town manager is still looking at and he will bring back an updated proposal to the council and that's something I'm working on him with um, but in the meantime, you know, that could be, you know, three, six months longer. Plus, we don't know how the council will feel about it. Um, so I do like the idea. And we talked about this at our meeting in November, in mid-November, about just resending the memo that we had sent to the council previously, just about this is TAC and this is what we do. And um, and we really don't have too many updates <laughs> from 2022. And then. Kim had also prepared like a kind of cover letter to it. So um, I'd like to go over that, but if people have other comments, we can also talk about it. What do people think? So here, I'll pull up Kim's and like- rel Relative to the memo or to the idea? Well, well the idea of it too. And I, I think too, um, you know, as now that there's the new council and there's the new TSO, um, so there is a the new TSO, Andy Steinberg, who's joined us tonight. We appreciate him being here, but um, like all the rest of the members on TSO are new members, um, including Jennifer Taub, Heather Lord, George Ryan, and Bob Hegner. So I think George Ryan had been on TSO previously when he was previously a counselor, but none of the other counselors have. So, I mean, I think ever since the creation of the council, and there's been questions about what is TAC, what does TAC do, what is TAC's role, all those kind of things. So I think it's a good time to send it back to the council for consideration and particularly to TSO if we expect that we could, because TSO could reach out to us and ask us for input and we could help them if they give us ways in which to do that. But Chris, did you have yeah, I don't think there's any harm in doing it. Um, um, I don't know, Andy, if, if you feel that there's, it would just be good to know if you feel like there's another way or another approach that we could take for, to educating the new committee members. 
I think that we need to get into the better discussion. It might be that having a joint meeting might some um, fairly quickly might be helpful. Uh, I've been thinking about this for a while, and we're trying various approaches. Uh, town manager had put forward the idea of uh, creating, sort of converting it from an advisory committee to a commission and actually giving authority to the commission. Uh, I, I was intrigued by the idea, though I have to acknowledge that there were several counselors who were really resistant to it as an idea. Uh, but uh, I think it is one with, that is definitely worth uh, pursuing. I think that uh, we had a problem that over the last couple of years that um, on your side, you have a lot of expertise that is not being utilized well. And uh, to clarify what your role is and to have more of the development work done by you and have the ideas coming from your committee and then going, if it requires TSO action, then TSO um, or the council, either one, if you go through TSO, then two uh, would have to act on it. If it is requiring uh, the um, action from DPW or others within uh, the executive part of town government where the work where the work gets done, um, then it could go directly. But I think that the idea of clarifying what the role is and getting the uh, committee charge updated to really reflect what the best path is, is really important, though it has to be coordinated with what Paul is thinking now as far as whether what he wants to propose. So uh, um, a joint meeting with uh, where Paul could be at too mm -hmm. might be really helpful. Um, the other, my other observation is, and I'd be curious on your comments on this, is from the TSO side, I think the TSO gets um, involved in so many uh, different matters that it's sort of hard to really give the focus to transportation that I think you can as a separate body. Um, and uh, I, we're losing focus on things because of that. Um, you know, one of the things that Jennifer Taub and I had been working on with Shalini Ball Milne, who's no longer in the council and therefore no longer in the committee, uh, was the waste hauler. And then you got, uh, as was mentioned earlier, the streetlight issues. Uh, so, the, uh, and we had the water and sewer issues. So there's so many different issues that I think the transportation issues aren't getting the focus that they need. And that's what I really would like to see improved in the next two years. Yeah. Well, thank you. That's that's really helpful feedback. Um, so back in November, so when we met on November 16th, like right after the TAC meeting was a TSO meeting. And um, if you may recall, and Andy, I think you were at that meeting, but that like a number of TAC members attended it. I did and Kim did and Marcus did just to voice, you know, that TAC is frustrated about how we're not really being utilized and we're sort of left out of the loop and um, just looking for some guidance from TSO and about how we can, and even from, you know, the town manager, we are a town manager committee about how we could be used and how we could be part of the conversation. Because it, as it stands now, a lot of, like, I mean, we're only asked, and I think this is the point that was being raised in this, you know, this cover sheet to the, to our older memo is that, you know, oftentimes TAC is just waiting to be asked to like provide input. And we've sometimes been told that we really don't, we can't provide input unless it's explicitly requested of us. 
So in that case, we're dependent on the TSO members to say, we would like to get tax input. And um, the fact that TAC isn't asked for input is one reason that I personally have sometimes just, even though I am also involved with TAC, but I just will weigh in myself, particularly because I also think about these issues in my day job, you know, and I'll try to lend some expertise and some knowledge to the discussions, even if TAC is not asked to do that. But that isn't always like a comfortable place to be. And the fact that like TAC isn't invited to the conversation is challenging for all of us. And yeah, I mean, uh, Tracy, don't you think that, um, and you correct me if you, if I'm wrong on this, that because of the way that we're doing it in the last two years, where was waiting for the committee to come up with things to ask for advice from you about as as TAC. It was uh, it, it was limited then to the items that came to our attention. Ideas weren't really being generated, and uh, that that's where uh, we're missing the vital link that you could provide by. Uh, if we clarify that the role of TAC is more in generation of uh, ideas. And the other um, observation to throw into this is, yes, I do recall that meeting, but as you just pointed out, I'm the only carryover memo member from the last one, uh, though um, I think that uh, having George Ryan back is very important. George did some really good work on the parking issue on Lincoln. And if you recall, uh, that's where the uh, policy about how you assess uh, what's appropriate on street parking for different widths of streets and different types of streets, arterial or uh, what uh you know which class they fall in and uh, uh developed an actual policy that could be applied and that was george's work so you know he has some background in this that, that will be helpful and uh i would actually like to see him consider taking liaison though i can't tie down his availability at the time you meet, which is, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to find out from him before we sign. Right. Because uh, yeah. we is haven't he... assigned our liaisons for the new council yet. Because <coughs> he, yeah, he started coming to our committees like very the very first time when, I mean, when he was brand new, maybe even before that, I don't know. But. And he was chair at TSO for a while, and um, I felt like TAC had pretty good communication then with him, and that he was also clear when TAC's input was requested. You know, there was a line of communication where he would, you know, send, instead of TAC, instead of TSO meetings just saying, oh, we should get tax input, and we should get the Disability Access Advisory Committee's input, and nobody, like, reaching out explicitly, like, he was always... Yes. reaching out and making that connection and saying we would like tax input and we would like tax input in the following ways which gave us a framework for responding yeah and providing the most useful help, input he actually came to a number of our meetings when we used to do them in the before time in the town hall in the small room downstairs and um he, i mean he actively participated um when it was just, I mean, there was no public, it was pretty much just him and the rest of the, I don't know, I guess it was a tack at that point, I don't remember, but um, I mean, he came to meetings, meeting after meeting after meeting. So he really did understand how it worked and what our, what, what we did. Yeah, I think, I, I don't think I was on tack at that oh, time, you but, weren't. That, but was, that's some good background. So yeah, oh, that he yeah. was really so involved. Yeah. yeah. So, Chris? Sorry, I have the Roomba going in the background. I hope that's not too distracting. Um, yeah, I guess, um, so in light of, um, I, I guess I have two, 
suggestions for a path forward. I definitely, or three, I definitely feel that sending the memo to the um, TSO is, um, and the whole council is the right thing to do. Um, just for basic education. Um, I do agree that um, asking Paul maybe to engage with us at another meeting about um, what a transition to a commission would look like, <clears throat> what the um, different types of authority sharing there are. I'm sure that some commissions have less power than others in terms of the right of way. And if that is a point of contention, um, you know, it would be nice to know and, and hear what happens in other municipalities across the state to consider what could potentially work here. And then I guess a third idea would be that we just, I mean, Andy is saying that um, making suggestions, it would be great if there were, if, if it made sense for us to start making suggestions. Um, it, we're kind of in a tailspin because we don't have any, uh, you know, our mission is so unclear that um, it almost, to me, feels like a time suck to spend on making suggestions. But on the other hand, if nobody else is doing it, <laughs> we have talked about reinvigorating the bike plan that this committee worked on for many years and um, I think needs to be transcribed from yes. some old so that's one idea. Another would be to, I know there's some, um, you know, information from um, DPW. I think Guilford showed us a um, kind of a rundown of the streets um, and their grades. Uh, and, you know, we can be thoughtful about the streets and their grades and, you know, the ones that have the worst grades, if they're the top priority, what could happen for pedestrians along those as well. I mean, I think there are ways that we can also just try to help fill that void that Andy is talking about. Um, but I guess only... I'm only saying that based on hope, like I hope it actually makes a difference, but it, you know, if, if there's no um, authority that would take up our work in that area, it feels a bit like a waste of time up front. So I, I guess I'm undecided on that third point that I'm making. Yeah, and I guess just to, to go on to your um, comment, Chris, um, you know, it's just the forward thinking that we've done, like the plans and the projections, which I feel like the council, like, and the TSO just doesn't have time to think ahead, right? I mean, that's at least in part, you know, to plan what's our vision for, and, and that's where I think our expertise and our, um, our, um, you know, all the strolls that we've made as a committee together, examining mm -hmm. street um, quality and sidewalk quality and all of these things. I feel like we have a prioritization based on, you know, our plan. And that's the kind of thing that I feel like the TSO is kind of, I mean, they, they don't have the time space to be able to do that. And I feel like that's something definitely that we can fill. So Guilford ha also has his hand up. So the, the piece that's really missing is um, when people call in and our people email in, there's a problem here. Um, there is no clear place where it goes and there's no clear process how it's looked at. Mm -hmm. um, that when you look at the transportation commissions or transportation organizations and other communities, the transportation committee is the receiver of those. And there's a process and there's a staff that does the preliminary look at all those things and produces a preliminary report. And that comes to that commission. And that commission then makes a recommendation, yay or nay, and how it falls into the, the work plan. Like you have Mr. Anderson, who is a diligent parent, and a diligent college employee who 
believes he's 100% correct in what he's proposing and wants that taken care of. You have other parents in other sections of town who want their perceived or real issue addressed as well. And these traffic commissions and traffic committees in these other cities, that's what they do. They take that information, they listen, um, it gets sent to a staff member who can actually then go through and pull the information together, accident reports, traffic counts, all that stuff. Um, there's actually not a person capable of doing that right now because we don't have a, the staff to do it. So if you do it, this type of committee or commission, you're going to have to staff it somehow. And mm -hmm. whether you take one of the planners and planning that works with the town engineer or you give another person to the town engineer to do it um, part time or full time. That kind of has to happen, um, but that's a piece that's missing as well. How do citizens bring their concerns? How are citizens' concerns vetted? And how are those vetted concerns then prioritized into what's done next? And I will say, um, so in the research on the transportation commissions, which I've you know, been working with the town manager on, is in addition to inventory, which which of the cities in Massachusetts do have transportation commissions, like actually he and I have both been looking at, you know, the minutes, agendas, like past meeting items for the commissions. And I mean, I do recall one that basically their whole agenda is basically bringing forward and looking to resolve and address the concerns that have been raised by residents and others. You know, and so their entire agenda is like going, you know, part of town by part of town you know, park, on-street parking, issues at intersections, new crosswalks, and so on like that. And just looking at them, they spend their entire meeting, like, focused on those details. And as Guilford says, in some of those cases, they're then saying, okay, we need to do a study here. We need to request support from the regional transportation agency to investigate it further. You know, we have the data already and things like that. And just really moving that forward and I mean, one thing I've liked about it is that it is a transparent process, you know, that people who have concerns can bring it to that commission. If they put it on the agenda, they go through them. Some of their meetings are quite long. And then, you know, at the end of each meeting, you know, they there's some items that they'll carry through to the next meeting and staff will be addressing in the meantime and so on. And so, like, there is this process that you can follow. Um, and I think it is important, you know, just like as... Chris brought up about the bike ped plan, but just also, you know, there are some documents out there already that the town has on where are, where should we be prioritizing improvements and repairs and so on, right? So the pavement management plan, like inventoried all the roads and which roads are the worst condition. And those are the ones that Guilford uses to decide, you know, the improvement, like the repairs. And we have the bike ped plan, which also has the map that's never been finished, but that also shows like the bike ped corridors that are the most critical and things like that. So there are those resources out there already. And so I would hope that when requests come in that they can be seen in those in those frameworks. But currently our process doesn't really support that as much as it could or probably should just so that, I mean, because a lot of this has already been thought about. So, but Chris, comment? Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess what, um, if, if we know that the council is particularly concerned about sharing authority around the right of way, um, that seems like a big deal. And I, I get why certain counselors would, um, have that concern, but we actually just talked about a bunch of stuff that's also critically important that I don't think has much to do with the right of way. Um, and so I'm wondering back in your court, Andy, if there's a way that TSO could um, request of Paul that, you know, the TAC have a couple of particular pieces put into its charge. One that we are um, 
stop number one for complaints and concerns that are obviously non-pressing. I mean, we're not going to deal with, like, you know, I just had a, um, a, a sewer line <laughs> go bad on our street. And obviously that's urgent and of a different um, type of response than, um, you know, should we put a sign here? But I think maybe the town council could just decide that we can have some of these pieces. We can be the first stop and here's what you would want us to do with that um, question or complaint or issue from a citizen. And second would be to make um, uh, recommendations tied back to some of the um, kind of management and vision documents that are already in existence. And even if they're incomplete, um, you know, to the extent that they are in use or, um, you know, can serve as a recommendation. But it seems easy enough that TSO could just do that. Um, and then I guess that would go to Paul and I guess, right, Paul would, I don't know. I'm just kind of putting it out there that those seem easy and they're, they don't seem to have, have the bigger question of who has authority over the right of way um, at their heart. So Andy, you have your hand up. Yeah, I mean, decisions over right of way issues and thoughts about right of way issues, are, I, I still think we are not really coming up with a way of addressing it correctly yet. Um, as you were talking about the example of your own street for sewer problem, I was thinking, the one I was thinking about is how much we went through with Pomeroy Court and how many complaints were coming from uh, Pomeroy Court in all sorts of different directions to staff, to council, and probably to you as a committee. And uh, the, uh, the, the, the problem was just so expensive for a fairly limited number of residences on the street that it needed resolution, but it was difficult figuring out how, how to get a resolution. And uh, what we can learn from that, um, I was also interested in the fact that somebody mentioned South Hammers Common because you did do a lot of good work as a committee on South Hammers Common, because, but that's a long time ago. That was actually when I was on the select board, when yes. we still had a select board. And uh, my recollection is, is that we were going to do some really intensive traffic studies and the uh, uh, bridge um, oh, yeah. was closed on uh, Station Road and it made the whole thing kind of useless because it was changing patterns so much that it was not going to be helpful to do any any further studies then. And then it kind of got lost, put in the temporary bridge, and it still got lost. Because so, the pandemic was after that. And the pandemic came after, correct. Yes. So we were we were about to like put monitors around there, and then the pandemic happened. Yeah. So well, so when I uh, I think that when in my conversations that I had with Paul about that, it was uh, didn't make sense to do it once the bridge was closed um, when Station Road was closed because Station Road was such a peter into that intersection. Uh, so, you know, lots of things, you know, things kind of come up, tremendous amount of time gets spent on them. And for one or another reason, they get lost. And uh, it may be that staffing is the problem. And, uh, it's not going to be easy because, uh, you know, Guilford said we need an additional staff person to kind of monitor and assist the commission to do that. But I don't know where the funds come from right now to hire somebody. Uh, we all know that the uh, state budget is going to be in horrible shape and it's going to affect the town budget 
tremendously. So uh, we were, you know, just trying to figure that out. And, um, I think that my suggestion would be we take advantage of the fact that we have a new TAC, our, our, our new, excuse me, um, a new TSO, and that we try and use the fact that there's a new TSO to re-energize the discussion and uh, that I will provide support as the current liaison and as the um, carryover member from the last TSO to this one to try and press at this issue of how we deal with traffic issues and what your charge should be and what your role should be um, should be a top priority item for uh, TSO during its first months. And uh, what's going to happen is that right now the uh, council is trying to get organized the first meetings of each of the committees for the new round. And then at the first meeting, the uh, a chair will elected and then the chair takes over and starts and gets into the question of uh, what is it that we're going to address and how do we prioritize it and I will um, at that point which I would guess is February uh, really be urging very strongly that we address um, not a specific policy issue about transportation, but the general uh, problem we're, that we're discussing now as to how we address those issues and that we, um, and I will bring up the suggestion of a joint meeting uh, in order to do that and see if I can get some traction on it. I think I will get support from George, which will be helpful. And uh, I think that we also get some benefit from Jennifer being there because she was a big advocate for the Lincoln Avenue parking issue, being a resident of Lincoln Avenue. And uh -huh. so she, uh, uh, I think we have a core of people who will understand. Well, I think having two representatives from District 3 on TSO will be helpful just because District 3 does include like downtown areas um, with sidewalks and with the highest level of bicyclists and things like that. So, um, but thank you, Andy. That will be very helpful. And um, I think once, I mean, I, you know, if other members want to speak, but um, I mean, I can see like once TSO is reformed, like, um, you know, coming either TAC and co back to TSO um, or, you know, we can have a joint meeting or something just about some of the with TAC. And I will also be continuing conversations with the town manager just about this idea of the transportation commission, because um, the time frame he gave me is he hopes to bring that to the council back in February as well. Um, so I think, you know, we'll just wait until TSO is formed. But I mean, definitely something needs to change moving forward. Like I don't, I mean, that was one reason I supported the trans idea of the trans commission, you know, when it first came up is because it doesn't function well as is. Um, so Chris, I see you have your hand up, but I just wanted to give like an opportunity to um, like Joe and Stefan and I don't know, we, I guess we lost Marcus temporarily, but um, if either of you have any comments or contributions you wanna to make to the conversation, you're welcome to. So, okay. Thanks. Nothing uh, substantial, but. Um, right. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Thanks. All right. So it sounds like there's general support um, for we have this, you know, cover memo that we wrote and we have the old 2022 memo, which again, not that much has changed. Um, I'll just like pull it up temporarily, but um, I would expect to send that to TSO and the council and then again, bring it up at a TSO meeting once like the new TSO is up and running 
and they have a new chair and things. And um, I may reach out to some of the individual counselors who are on the TSO because I know most of them already. And um, I also know that a number of them do care closely about transportation issues. So any other thoughts on this? Okay. I mean, so I will say too, I mean, I'm glad that we're talking about it now. And I was really disappointed, you know, after we created that memo the last time, two years ago, and like nothing much ever happened, right? I know I shared it with the council president at that time, and she put it in one of the council packets. Um, but there was, you know, there were just this, there was sort of the assumption that that TSO's tax charge will be rewritten. You guys, if you remember, like, chair previously, Aaron Hayden, he had worked on a new charge and things, and something was going to happen where there was going to be a new charge. And I was sort of told, and every time, oh, just wait, because it's all going to happen, but none of it has happened. So I appreciate Andy's willingness to bring it up to uh, TSO and the council again, and hopefully we can finally move forward this time. So, because we've been in this holding pattern for a while, which I know is frustrating to all of us. So, all right, so we don't have too much else for the agenda. I mean, the I guess the next thing is to talk about when we could meet again. I mean, it sounds like, yep, Kim. I can't hear you, you're on mute. I'm on item eight, which is topics, not reasonably. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Well, do, let's, um, do you wanna bring up your topic before we, figure out our next meeting or do you have um well it's just something that i've noticed in town with all of the uh, well particularly so so in the earlier times we were often consulted about like for example um the new development down um by the cumberland farms on um Route nine, you mean Belchertown right. Road? Uh -huh. Yes. Or whatever that new development is that's off of that main, that intersection. Southeast on Street, I think it's Southeast Street. Yes. Um, we were consulted about, about the um, sidewalks and access and whatever for that. We were also consulted, for example, about um, sidewalks, the, the and, and, um, the access to the like condominiums that are down where on university drive that cross the wetlands. And also, you know how there's the weird um, bike lane that go down, you know, it's a divided kind of road there with the access road on the side. Does everyone know where I'm talking about down there? You're talking about university drive between route nine and Amity. Yes. Yes. And that, we were also um, consulted about the access there and um, at, particularly access from the new development. It crossed a bike lane and went into the the um, street on that, you know, that new, those new condos there. And we were consulted about that. And we actually had a lot of input into that. And, and um, I think that actually works really well um, that access to the, those condominiums because it pass through a sidewalk and also a bike lane and all that stuff. Um, I'm really upset that we were not consulted at all about the access and the crosswalks between the new, um, on, um, is it North Pleasant and um, where the two new developments are next to the toy box downtown? Mm -hmm. The crosswalks there are really messed up, like seriously um, skewed. And I, we were never consulted about that. And they don't work because people coming from downtown will not use the cross. The, I, I'm sure none of you have ever really paid attention to that crosswalk, but it affects me and many people who walk through downtown regularly there's a new crosswalk to the newest development you know the newest um so, so there's the one so there's the one that we were asked to weigh in like the um, the planning director she asked us to weigh in on the one that's near garcia's but i know you're talking about the one no closer to i'm talking about right. i'm talking about the one even the the right. um yes 
And that crosswalk is crazy and nobody will use it except for the people maybe coming out of that newest development and going to the bus stop that's directly across from it. Um, but but it's really, it's really, it's it's really, really in the wrong direction. And people who are crossing the street there are now using a non-striped pattern. And and I'm really, I'm really upset about it actually, because it makes no sense. And we were never consulted like ever about this. I don't know who was consulted about it because if anybody looked at it, it would not make any sense to anyone considering the traffic flow. So those are the kinds of, and, and, and I've seen close calls there all the time because, you know, it's kind of at that, there's kind of a corner right there coming from downtown and people just don't, don't, don't yield, don't stop. I'm really, I'm really surprised. You're talking about the one. So there is one in that area that has the blinking lights. So you're talking about. No, I am not talking talking about about that one. There's a new one one. south of that. It's right on the end of Kendrick Park, the very end of Kendrick Uh, Park. Yeah. Between. It's like where the metal um, cow is. No, it's on the other side of the street across. It's where the new development is. I don't know what side of the street. East. That's the east side of the street. That's the east side, yeah. And it's and it's and it's and it's by the newest development, which is n- the north development. The one that's not open yet. Not Aya. Yes, correct. The one that's not open yet. Right. And the sidewalk, which had been st- awkwardly striped yeah. before, is even more or awkwardly striped and in and it's new. It's a brand new. It's like curb cuts have been made. It's, it's, mm. it does not make any sense like that, that crosswalk, except for the new people who are going to be coming out of the newest development. It makes no sense for anyone coming downtown and then going over to Kendrick Park. It makes no sense and nobody will use it. That's my, that's my real concern. Nobody use it. And I've seen people not using it and instead using the more convenient cross. It just those kinds of details are the things oh, for sure we should be consulted on because we can make sense about it. Like I don't know who approved that. That is the I, I'm I'm so offended. I mean, I because I can we have been asked about so many other developments in town and simply the crosswalks, the accessibility to the street. Mm-hmm. And the sidewalks. I mean, I feel the same about some of the other projects that we were never asked for input on, including the whole redesign of like Boltwood, you know, Boltwood next to the mm-hmm. new park and which direction it is and parking next to the bus stop and all those things. I mean, I remember at one time I talked to a counselor and I said, well, isn't this ever going to go to TAC? And, um, and they said, no, there's already like so many people involved with like making these decisions. But even the question about, I mean, one concern I've had ever since that project was approved is like the idea of having the traffic on Boltwood one way going south, you know, and talking to transportation professionals at UMass, like they've said, well, if you're going to have it one way, it should really be one way north, in their opinion, though they haven't looked at it, you know, as a detail as much as DPW. But again, I mean, there are a number of cases like as you're, and you're just bringing up one where like nobody asked TAC for input. I mean, we were asked all about the other one, right? The one across from Garcia's. um, And yeah, that came, that came from the planning department and the planning department said we want TAC input. So, but I have a feeling it was just the developers who said, yeah, we'll put a crosswalk here. It really, I don't know. Guilford, Guilford might have input. Guilford, did you review those plans to? Those plans went through the planning department review process, which includes public works, planning, and the planning board. So it was pretty much put back where the original crosswalk was. It was shifted a little bit because the driveway was It is not put back where it was at all, at all. That's because the driveway shifted a little bit with the new new buildings. It should have been put back at least where it was before. It's really, it's really, someone is going to get hurt there. I can, I, I mean, I see it whenever I walk home. So you, your your frustration is all about because how the charge is not set up and what the commission, what this group is supposed to do. That's what yes. you're- You I mean. are right. 
that's what it's all about. Um, yes. Personally, I disagree with many of the things you want to get involved in, but that's not my choice. Um, okay. That's up to the town manager and the town council on how they want to set it up. Um, but that's that the, the, it's that way because that's how it was set up. Yeah. No, you're right. We have so many uh, people involved in the dis thing about Boltwood in the one way direction. Oh, and really? Design about that. And uh, I think that it was really coming out of uh, uh, Dave Zomack and the work that he was doing in with Guilford about the design and the options and uh, how to, in, in the consideration of the North Common design and whether to include parking on a town, continue to provide parking on a town common and how we might increase spaces elsewhere so that we have um, less of a net loss of spaces with the elimination of that lot. And the one way was a way of being able to then get parking on both sides of Boltwood after the construction is completed. And uh, I don't know, I don't remember the direction piece as well, uh, but uh, if, if you had all of the traffic going out the other way, I would think that you'd be considering uh, the problem that you can't really make safe left turns into uh, Main Street at that point. And yeah, I mean, there's a no left turn. I, there's a no left turn sign at the end of that intersection right now, too. Anyway. I mean, I think you know part of it is just that some of the discussion, some of the decisions are complicated, right? And and in that case, it was clear that part of the idea with the one way was to add on street parking since that lot was being eliminated. But the reason it goes south is to cut out the cut through traffic. If you're going down Boltwood now, you're going to use a go to the town hall. You're not cutting through there to avoid the light. Um, which is what is used a great deal there is people turn down spring to go around the light and then cut across. So if you are making this plaza in front of the town hall that you want to have events on and close every once in a while, you don't want an errant car coming in the other direction and going sure. through. So that's why that was turned. I mean, it, it is set to go south, right? Yes. Because in your example, right, you wouldn't be able to get to town hall like I it seems, I mean, I guess we'll see, but it no, seems that it could increase the traffic on spring and other, on the other parallel streets, like for people who know that they don't want to end up like going all the way to South Pleasant Street, <laughs> but. Well, it also, it, it cuts down the people who are going down South Pleasant Street and then avoiding Main Street. Oh, yeah. They're complicated. It is complicated and and, yeah. and it's moving, it does move something you may not like other people may not like someplace else and make it worse there. So not for sure. Yeah. I mean, what always frustrates me in that area is uh, the difficulty coming um, south on uh, Lesson Street and then trying to make a left turn into Maine at the major intersection. That's a virtual impossibility because the light is angled so that you can't tell where you are in the light cycle and the phase and the phasing is kind of the phasing probably needs to be changed a little bit there but then again that's a bigger discussion that if you really want to change the phasing you need to think about possibly doing away with the protected pedestrian crossings and have pedestrians cross with the flow of traffic and not a pedestrian because then you could add another you could take the pedestrian phase and turn it into a left turn phase it's really anyway. <laughs> if we're gonna have a citizen, that's a good example, actually, because if you can have a, a committee that's really gonna have the expertise and the time to make the initial investigation and recommendation, which committee? No, it's true. Well, I guess I mean that would be part of the hope my hope with the transportation commission is like to bring everybody you know in the room together for some of that decision making but 
to be continued. I mean, I'm sure we could have other examples as well, but okay. But thank you, Kim, for expressing that. And um, we maybe we could talk about it more at a future meeting. Um, okay, so, I mean, in terms of the last item on our agenda was the next tax meeting, um, the next tax meeting. It sounds like if TSO, you know, is going to be forming, starting to meet back in February, maybe I mean, we don't have anything pressing on our agenda. Should we just um, move our next meeting to February? Does that make sense to people? Yes. So why don't we, do we want to propose it for the 8th of February, which is Thursday? Sure. So we have been meeting at 5.30 on Thursdays. If that ends up being a conflict with TSO, we can talk about moving after then. But why don't we do that for our next meeting? And Guilford, is that going to work for you? If we meet on the 8th of February? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Sorry. Okay, great. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So let's do that. And um, and if TSO does meet in the meantime, like I will like reach out to TSO and you know maybe speak during public comment just informally just to keep start the conversation going. And um, and I also would like to one thing I'll work on too is like some of the pieces we talked about with the bike ped plan, and making sure like we have the list of edits um, so that that can move forward eventually as well because it would really be nice to get those in particularly now that the plan is a few years old and so yeah you know and things are already changing <laughs> i mean it changed you know for example right. with exactly. the closing of wildwood and the implementation of the new school yeah fort river um yeah i feel like that has we we should uh, you know update that at some point too Definitely. I would agree. Because I feel like that Fort River site is 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 a is a concern. A, a, well, like that, I, might, that might go to the front of the priority prioritization. And I think that the I mean the that's something the town is looking at as well. Right. I mean Guilford, aren't there some plans with the intersection or to investigate it yeah. more? In that area, I'll bring up one last issue and then I probably have to go in a second anyway, but um uh, Gilford, had you heard anything that the school building committee is talking about during when construction starts on the new school, closing the south entrance, uh, the current entrance to the parking lot at Fort River Elementary so that people come both in and out at what is currently the north entrance and the south would become for construction? That's correct. Yeah. So that's a fairly major change with a lot of consequences. It is. And what's the time frame for when construction would start there? April. April of this yeah. year. Okay. See, that's the kind of thing our committee could really dig into. <laughs> well, that is soon. Okay. Wow. And so just um one other item that I had just in terms of like committee comments updates. So one thing is I did reach out to the inspection department um, before the last snowfall because now with the updates that the council made to the snow and ice bylaw, the inspection department is in charge of enforcement. And I asked them what's the best way to report if people do have any concerns or complaints. Um, and they said that they got back to me and they said that there's an online form um, on the town website. I actually, until they sent me the link to it, I had no idea that that form was there. It's it's the form that they use for any general property complaints. And then they said that you, they can, you can submit it there as well. But it is a little lost in my mind in the depth of the website. And so I did make the suggestion that they make it easier to find and that per perhaps also advertise that that is one way that people can make the complaints. Um, so, so we'll see what happens there, but I would be interested to see, I mean, um, the extent to which people actually do report snow and, you know, snow and ice concerns. And so, and I am hopeful too. And that was one thing I was going to reach out to some of the, my counselors on, um, and other counselors I know were interested in this to just to help advertise that that's one way that people can um, 
uh, let, you know, to contact the town if they do have concerns. So, so yeah. I was out of town during the last snowfall, but Guilford did, did the, um, did the sidewalk plow, like go out and do sidewalk plowing for that. Yeah, they went out. I was out of town too. So you, you covered, like, they covered all the routes and the standard routes and stuff. They did. Thank you. Yeah, that all seemed to happen really well, actually. I was I was really pleased with all of that. So I mean my concern is always just that um because people expect the town sidewalk plow to come that they don't do it themselves and the sidewalk the town sidewalk plow doesn't always come out. So mm. it'd be nice if the town could advertise that, you know, people are still responsible to do it themselves. Particularly if it's like a you know, if it's a longer storm. And mm. um and so the, I mean, the DPW would only do the one pass anyway. So, but good, but good. I'm glad. All right. I wish our snow was sticking around a little longer. I'm sad about all the rain. But, okay. Well, great. So thank you all, and uh, we will see you in February, February eighth. Hey, all right. Happy thank you. Happy good night, everyone. February. Bye. Thank you. Happy. All right. Take care. Thanks, bye. Bye.